Hi, everybody. David Allen back with Dave Edwards, ex NPR executive and and uh, gadfly and I don't know what else. How what however you would label yourself, Dave. Anyway, uh, we, this is a sort of ongoing, continuing conversation about some of the issues and questions that show up. You know, Dave is a relatively newbie to. Uh, implementing this in, in uh, GTD Connect you know, aficionado and so forth. So Dave's been, has got some great questions and so forth. So Dave, let me toss the tennis ball back over the fence to you. And maybe for folks who may not know who you are yet, uh, a few sentences about that and what, what you'd, you know, where we'd like to go today. Well, uh, thanks, David. Always great to uh, spend time with you today, and thank you for the generous introduction. Um, my background is in uh, in broadcasting, uh, particularly in public media. Started out as a journalist, ended up in management, uh, worked uh, managing the uh, NPR public radio station here in Milwaukee. Uh, for many years, uh, recently retired, but I'm doing a lot of writing and uh, consulting around the subject of productivity and time management and leadership issues. And uh, I've been fascinated by GTD ever since I first found the book. Uh, but I, I've always said that it's a it's a journey that that if, if somebody thinks they're going to read the book one day and the next day they're going to be the most productive person in the world, it's it you're setting yourself up for failure and. So I always say I'm a, I'm a student of productivity, but in particular, I'm really a student of GTD. And, and since you and I started talking, I've, I've been learning a lot about the process. And I hope those of us who, those people who are watching us are, are kind of learning as, as, as they go as well. Now, the last time you and I talked, we, we talked about where the GTD process begins with collecting ideas and, and projects and things. And today I'd really like to move to the next steps of getting things done, uh, clarifying and, and organizing and uh, everything that we've, we've collected. So uh, let me just jump in with, with clarifying. So we've collected all this stuff. Uh, what does it mean that we have to clarify those things? Isn't it enough to just write down all these ideas that we've had? Well, a lot of people would think so, especially if they're into the old to-do list kind of habit. You know, uh, most of those to-do lists are incomplete lists of still unclear stuff. When you see something like mom or bank or tooth or VP of marketing or whatever, you see that on a list, you go, yeah, great. Well, you captured something that probably has your attention, but there's still some thinking about it, some decision-making that you haven't done. You haven't finished your thinking yet on what those things are. And if you haven't finished your thinking, there's still a loop that's spinning in there. You know, what are you going to do about, you know, do you really want a divorce? Do you really want to adopt? Do you really want to give your kids karate lessons? Do you really want to hire a VP of marketing? You know, what do you want to do with the bank? So there's still a lot of thinking. And so sometimes those lists that people have as to-do lists will create as much stress as they relieve simply because they're reminding you of decisions you haven't made yet and thinking you haven't finished yet. So the thinking to finish is simply to clarify the nature of what are those things. You know, are they actionable, yes or no? You know, I use, you know, Dave, you probably heard me do this a zillion times, but I use the example of your kitchen. You know, it's like everybody's got a kitchen, everybody's got a cooking area, you know, of some sort. <clears throat> you come in and it's out of control, right? It's not how you need it to make a nice dinner for your family or to invite friends over for appetizers or whatever, right? It's out of control. So then what do you do? Well, the, what has your attention are the things that are not where they need to be the way they need to be. Mm -hmm. right? A lot of stuff in your kitchen is fine, right? But there's a lot of stuff that's not if it's kind of out of control. So then what do you need to do? I need to decide what is this? Oh, this is a spice. Oh, this is a dirty dish. Oh, that's a good food or that's bad food, whatever. And you're doing the, the clarifying right there. It's like, like, what's the nature of this thing that's off? Mm -hmm. or not the way it needs to be you know, and how it needs to be. And that's the clarification step because you don't know what to do with the spice until you decide it's a spice. <laughs> you, don't, you don't know what to do with a dirty dish until you decide it's a dirty dish. <laughs> right? So clarify and organize sit very, very close together because you don't know how to organize anything until you know the nature of what these things are. Mm -hmm. right? So 
you know, the mail that you pull out of your mailbox, you don't know what to do with that stuff until you decide, is that a junk, is that piece of junk mail? Is that a bill? Is that a, is that a note from a neighbor or what is, what is it? You know, mm-hmm. what's that, what's the nature of that thing? So determining the nature of something is the clarify step, as well as, you know, probably the essence of one way to sort of describe the essence, an, an essential GTD principle is to get things done, you need to decide what done means and what doing looks like and where it happens. Mm-hmm. So when we're what clarifying, are we are we looking for the next action right away? Mm, yeah. Well, if you haven't decided the next action, if it's an actionable thing, then you haven't fully clarified it yet. Okay. So, um, you know, so, so yeah. We have a number that, of options. That's part of. So we have a number of options. So when we say, okay, we're going to clarify, I mean, one thing I could do is I'm I'm looking at a few things on my desk here that I could probably just just trash, throw it out. I'm probably never going to need it. It's just junk mail that has been sitting here on my desk, but you know, that's a permanent action, you know, and and maybe that's where, and I know myself, that's where sometimes I get stalled in this process because I see something and I go, well, I could probably throw that out. Oh, wait, what if I need that again? Yeah. Well, you need a box of, gee, here's crap that I might need again. (laughs) That's that's true. That's how you clear. You don't have to, that's all you need to do is decide what it means to you. The problem is, Dave, if you've got that, your whole life feels like there's crap you haven't decided about. But if you can, if you decide that's what that is, there's crap I'm not sure I don't know what to do with. Let me put that here. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. I, coach, I coached a, a, one of the busiest people I've ever met in my life. Uh, he had come back from a, a trip to Russia and he, he, was a, he, he ran a you know, foreign policy institute um, out of New York, and he would tear uh, op-eds out of newspapers like crazy, just to stay abreast of what the world was thinking about X and Y and Z. Right? So he would come back with with suitcases full of <laughs> op-eds torn, right? And so he was about to. So I sat down to work with him, and and you know what we had to do was to figure out, okay. Uh, we needed to create, um, I think, three different kind of in baskets. What has to be handled before he leaves for, I don't know where he was going to Prague or somewhere the next day. What's got to be handled or dealt with before that? So we we put that in his literally in basket, hmm. and then and then here's all the stuff that'll wait till I'm back from that trip, but it still has to be handled before I go to. Santiago or wherever the heck and who's going next. So we had another another cardboard box. It's called before whatever the date was, you know, deal with. And then we had another cardboard box that said, look, I don't have to deal with this stuff until, you know, wherever. And we, we sort of, we, we did a, a, a version of clarify even the collect process just to make us make sense out of it so the guy could get a handle on you know what was right in his face what could wait a little bit what could wait even longer and 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 so forth so there's absolutely nothing wrong with that as a matter of fact that was that was quite helpful Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know to be able to get his head clear so it's like well what do you need to do to get your head clear dave about the stuff sitting on your desk right right see i i used to have this habit of similar to your to your uh, colleague uh, where I would find all sorts of interesting articles that I would save into Evernote because that was where I saved all my articles and I promised that I would read them again until I realized that the list of articles that I promised to read had just gotten so long that I, I never was really going to do that. So I did have to purge that and then I got to the extent where it was like, wait a minute, why am I really saving all this stuff because I can do a quick search on the New York Times website and find that article again. So I was I didn't even need to archive that stuff in my system anymore anymore. Right. Um, so one of the other sort of options we have here is to, is to say, okay, we've, we've, we've got this item and we can put it on our, our someday maybe list, which I'm always very nervous about because that list can quickly become the quickly forgotten list. Cause I have, I've kind of moved it off of my, my initial, I got to do something with this right now. And I put it on this other list, but 
will I ever really go back and revisit that again, you know? Maybe not. <laughs> and so is what? that okay? <laughs> no, that's terrible. You're going to burn in hell. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean it, 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 it is surprising to me, though, how much stuff I put into that someday maybe list. And then I go back and revisit it in a month or two months or whatever and find out that what I really thought was important really i mean why did i even think i was gonna do this well what's wrong with that <laughs> no, nothing wrong with keeping a bunch of stuff that you may then need to curate later on right because you have maybe your attention on i might need that at some point well great well at some point <laughs> you go back through it and go no don't need that anymore right 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 me, me too me, me too yeah so <laughs> so what um, i think curation See, curation, I think, is an ongoing process. See, people think getting organized is some static thing. It's not because the world changes daily. You change daily by what you consider important. You say stuff you think is important now, but two weeks from now, you know, yeah. why'd you say that, right? Because you changed. So organization means I just need to make sure things are in the right places, get, given my agreement with what they are to me. See, being organized simply means that where things are matches what they mean to you. Here's crap I don't want to deal with. Great. Here's the crap I don't want to deal with. Bucket. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're organized. Right? Yeah, and yet you're uh, organized uh, at that moment in time because you're evolving. Right. But tomorrow you'll be older, wiser, stupider, <laughs> dumber. I don't know <laughs> what you and I are going to be tomorrow. You know, I don't know. Right. Hopefully smarter, more mature, or whatever or or even just older and more forgetful who knows but right. what happens you know so organizing is is a never-ending process if you really want to stay organized i don't know do you have a desk drawer yes i do everything in there belonged there at one point mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but you if you open it, it up if, but if you open it up now and go through it you go you know I've got a lot of nice file folders. I don't, nice I don't, I don't, yeah, I, th I, you know, those ballpoint pen refills were really good when I had that pen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but yeah, yes, things change. Yeah. So I, also things have change. A lot, I also have a lot of pens that I thought I would like buy a dozen of. And then, you know, I, I never quite get around <laughs> to it. And I've got all this piles of pens here that I'd one time <laughs> Well, you could, you know, you could, you could, here's my pen, Dave's pen collection. <laughs> That's what it's you become. <laughs> you know, um, one other thing, I know that one of, one of your principles, which I, which I really like is, is understanding what belongs on a calendar and what doesn't belong on a calendar. But, but the one thing that I've, I've been thinking a lot about is at one point in time, before we got infatuated with digital systems, we had tickler files, which were, you know, the 43 folders. And now, I mean, I don't, I don't use 43 folders anymore because most of what I get, I would have to then print to put in a folder and it just, it's redundant. But I often wonder like, should I just, instead of saying this is a, t a digital tickler file, should I just put more of these reminders on my calendar? Well, depends on what your tech is that you've got. You know, I'm, we've migrated to Office 365. So all I do is take, I can take a, an email and create an appointment, but I can make it an all day appointment so that it just shows up as a reminder on that day up at the top of the calendar. It's not tied to a time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's how I, I, that's how I've migrated away from the 43 folders is basically just putting triggers on my calendar that say, Hey, have you thought about X, Y, Z? It doesn't mean I have to do anything on that. It just says, okay, on that day, I want to be reminded that X, Y, and Z is coming up or whatever. You know, for yeah. instance, uh, I keep avoiding taking my second language exam for my Dutch, uh, you know, immigration. And if I still am not ready to do it, I've got two weeks ahead of that exam because you still have to, you have to, you can, you can, reschedule that exam within if if it's before two weeks if you don't you have to pay for the the 50 euros or whatever that it costs you to, to do the exam so i have it you know that's one of those little triggers i have on my calendar two weeks ahead of that exam 
David, you know, you want to reschedule. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the kind of stuff. I mean, you know, come on, that's that's useful, and, and, yeah, that, no, and I, it works for me. It it is very useful. The one problem I've had with that system. So see if you had to deal with this or not. So let's say I I put something down as a reminder that I need to you know make that that exam appointment today, but then you know, this day gets really busy and I never look at that item on the top of my calendar and now it's tomorrow and that number, that, that, that memo didn't well, transfer to well, the yeah, 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 well, you know, <laughs> the night before I look at my calendar. Okay, all right. You know, if you don't do that, you know, why have it? I mean, why, why, why bother? I mean, <laughs> A lot of people put a lot of stuff on their calendar that they actually don't do. That's why it's not, it doesn't ring their bell, you know, as, as mine does. Mine are got to, got to know or got to do on that day, period. Mm -hmm. That's, and that's just, you know, personal habit, you know, and best practice about how do I manage, you know, those agreements. So it really, what, what it really is, though, it's, it's become an appointment. So, I mean, when you look at that item, it's like it's something that you've got to do today and you treat it as if it was, you know, having a call with Dave Edwards. Yeah. Or, or something I need to be aware of that day. Not that I have to do. Oh, OK. All right. Okay. Uh, hey, you, David. Hey, David. You know, this is due in two weeks. That may show up there. Uh, and then I can decide what I want to do with that. but. I told myself, here's what I want to be reminded of on that day. So calendar is three things. It's a day specific or time specific stuff appointments. You know, you and me talking uh, day specific stuff called, hey, I got to send that FedEx this day. Anytime today is fine as long as before FedEx closes. Or day specific information. You know, uh, Catherine's going to that her physiotherapist today. I just need to know that I'd like to know. Mm -hmm. So what do I need to know? What do I need to do? You know, those are very specific things. I mean, that's, that's kind of the hard landscape, you know, that, that I navigate with to begin with. Sometimes there's, you know, seldom, but there's some days there's nothing on my calendar. It doesn't mean I'm not doing anything. It just means that nothing that will die if I don't do it or don't, or I'm, I'm not aware of it. So all of those reminders, let's say Catherine's appointment, that's just information for you. You use that as the as the all day appointment on top of your calendar then? Yeah, well, you know, with our tech now, I can see her calendar when I click on it. Yeah. See what she's doing. Or, right. You know, that's just good information, you know. Right. What are you what are you doing nowadays? Uh, and I, I preface this by saying because we're all kind of migrating more and more digitally. So what are you doing nowadays with uh, waiting for items? Where does that go in your system? I have two places. Uh, because I'm using, you know, Office 365, I'm using the task in there. I migrated all of my, um, you know, my, my action lists and my waiting for into to-dos. So there's some there, but I also have a folder, one of my favorite folders, so it's right at the top, where I can just drag an email and drag a BCC that I'm automatically sent to myself. If I'm sending something to somebody or whatever, I can drag it right over into a waiting for folder. So I have two places that I need to see to review my waiting for. I don't wanna have to copy and paste waiting for emails you know, into an into my uh, my action list. I just need to drag it over into a waiting for a folder. So I've just got two places I have to look at. Yeah. So the not, per not, not perfect, line. not perfect, not perfect, not perfect, but it's fast. Yeah, that's the bottom line. You've got two places that you've got to remember to check for those for those reminders. That mm -hmm. uh, and and so you have a. I presume then you also have a folder for your next action lists and projects. Well, yeah, I have my, they're not folders. Those are all in my tasks. Okay. So in they're in my to-dos. I just have the list like I used to have in Lotus Notes, you know, where I had my, those lists. So I have a, have a list called projects. I have a list called errands. I have a list called at home. I have a list called calls to make, mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. So those are all there. Uh, 
in that. So that's particularly, you know, these days my life is just not that busy, not that complex. So you know, my weekly review is enough to just go through then those lists and make sure I'm not missing anything that I should be doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Now, now, is is clarifying clarifying that is very different than doing. I I, I get, you know, like for me sometimes the temptation is to look at an item. And just I want to get started on it because it's a it's a fun project and it's gonna it may take me a while to do it but it's like I want to I want to just jump in so is that I mean I know that's okay to do it but it kind of distracts me then from what I had originally promised that I was going to do by clarifying all these items that I had collected. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so so. But if you have a the whole, the whole, no, but Dave, come on, Dave. The whole idea is to feel comfortable about what you're doing and what you're not doing. Right. So when you decide to do that, just make sure that you've looked at all the other stuff. So you better wait. So on Sunday nights, when I do my weekly reviews, for the most part, um, this is when that generally happens to me. I start going through all of the items that I've collected in the previous week, things that have been around, <clears throat> and I want to make sure I want to do it. But there is that temptation to say, well, that's fine. I can keep doing that later. I really want to work on this item right now. And then I never get back to the to the clarifying part. Now, you know, maybe that's fine. But by the end of the day, I go, oh, man, I never finished the original thing I was starting out to do. And my my weekly review has gotten very long because it's no longer a review. Yeah, you don't want to if you're doing a real review, you don't want to go down a deep rabbit hole. Yeah. You know, you need to look across the whole thing, then give yourself the freedom to go down a deep rabbit hole if you want. But you just need to get yourself clear enough so that you feel okay about doing that. You know, actually, that's one of the things that that really, I kind of fell in love with the system because the old method of just having to do lists where you'd have ABCs or whatever, it, it forced you or it, the, t the, the you were like almost forced to concentrate on things that maybe you weren't in the creative mood to deal with at that moment. And what I like about this system is that I, I think I have more freedom now to say, yeah, but I want to work on this item today. <laughs> you know, me too. Yeah, and, and but but some people still, you know, I I was I was meeting with someone, a client who uh, I was explaining this to and, and, you know, he said, unless he uh, prioritizes his items at the beginning of the week is, you know, one, two, three, uh, he would focus on the easy tasks. And I explained it. I mean, it does take a certain amount of discipline to do this. You can't ignore all the tough tasks, but uh, you know, that one, two, three system used to just make me feel guilty when I'd work on item, item five, six, and seven. Yeah. And, you know, I understand the, the reason for one, two, three, but since you have to go have a cup of tea or take a pee, that's number one. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, one, two, three, what do you mean by that? Mm -hmm. And understand, yeah, yeah, some things are going to have a higher payoff if they're finished in terms of your bigger game that you're doing or what your commitments are or whatever, for sure. So there's nothing wrong with that kind of strategic thinking, uh, but trying to organize your priorities in that kind of a rigorous way. And by the way, some people, maybe just their personality fits, that fits mm -hmm. me. And so if that's what keeps their head clear, God bless them. Yeah, yeah go for it. Yeah. You know? yeah. So there's, no, there's really no right or wrong about GTD, about this stuff. It just says, what do you need to do to keep your head as clear as it can be doing whatever you're doing and feeling as comfortable as you could be doing what you're deciding to do what you're doing that, that's really all it's about yeah I, and that could look that could look a lot different for a lot of different people in a lot of different contexts i think sometimes the problem is that in a lot of the uh systems uh whether they're digital or paper-based systems they're they're trying to force you into a a very rigid approach 
and not everybody works the same way. This is the big thing that I keep coming back to. I, you know, I'm probably, you know, you're probably more productive than I am. And, and, but yet, you know, as long as I'm getting my work done and I'm enjoying it, then who cares if you do it a certain way? <laughs> I got it. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So before we wrap up this conversation, so, so tell me a little bit more about this uh, language test. How proficient are you these days, Mr. Allen? Yeah, it, it gaat een beetje langzaam. Yeah. So ik begin Nederland te leren, maar yeah, dag bij dag, een uh, beetje bij beetje, little by little. So, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of, there's we'll a lot see. of new sounds in there that happen in the throat. Well, actually, I, I was an exchange student in Switzerland in my, in, when I was 17, lived with a Swiss family, and I actually learned to speak Swiss German a little bit. And Swiss German, if you could speak Zurich, Zurich Deutsch, <laughs> they say, if you could learn to speak, say, two words in Zurich Deutsch, uh, you, you're, you're on your way. <laughs> which is a, a K is Kuch line. It's like a small cheese K. Or... A, a kitchen cabinet. So if you can say that and you learn to do that and that guttural stuff, then that was that made it pretty easy for me to catch the, the Dutch the, the Dutch G's, which they pronounce with a ch. I say I can I go. Uh, so, so are you and Catherine doing this together? Are you? Uh, uh, yeah, she's doing. She's doing her version of it. She's. I'm doing mine. So are you We're communicating kind of, more when you get together? When you have dinner, are you uh, shifting <laughs> over into no, touch? No, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> We're not. We're not that far. But are, when you're, it's, uh, it's, it, as I say, it's Alzheimer prevention. Trying to learn <laughs> Dutch when you're 76, like I am. So. You know. <laughs> When you uh, when you now when you you've moved into your new place and when you're when you're dealing with contractors, are you uh, able to use English or are you having to uh, use? A Most language? of them do English to some degree, which is nice. I mean that you know that that's the nice thing about the Netherlands. Most people here who've been here for any length of time, you know, speak some version of English anyway, because it's it's really the second language, you know, in the country. Uh, but a lot of the workers are from, you know all over the world so uh but luckily we have a contractor you know sort of a manager who speaks five languages so he's able to <laughs> you know make sure things go well mm -hmm. so in addition to uh, managing uh, getting the new house in order and uh and uh, uh you know doing all the things you normally anything exciting going on in your life these days no okay <laughs> <laughs> Well, yes, uh, you know, I picked up my flute again, so I just printed out my flute fingering chart so I could know how to do the really high flute notes. Oh, wow. Uh, and so, I, you know, my place is just getting settled enough that I can paint again and play the flute again. Those are my two sort of hobbies, as well as flower arranging, which, you know, I do regularly. So we yeah. Keep flowers, keep flowers going. So all that's that's exciting enough. You uh, yeah. you really are a Renaissance guy. You've got uh, <laughs> you you're 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 not you're not slowing down, man. You're you're just keep going and learning, and and that's very impressive. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks. I'm just gonna yeah. I'm just gonna thanks, go take a nap. Yeah. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, David. Love, love good napping. Yeah. David, thank you for spending time with me today and kind of going over some of this stuff. And hopefully we'll we'll do it again and we'll continue discussing other aspects of uh, of GTD. So thank you very kindly. Thank you, Dave. Yeah, great for the invitation. And uh, this was fun. We'll do it again.